You too. Team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And, and I had to make sure we recorded this video in 4K just so it was crystal clear how I felt about this move. Now, let me take you back to yesterday uh, when the Ravens released third round pick in 2019 wide receiver Miles Boykin. Saw a lot of fans say, oh man, he was bum anyway. He was sorry. About time. This is long overdue. They should have done this so long ago. Oh, why did it take them so long? And everything else under the sun. You heard it all. Um, but what's been funny about all of that is that today I've seen a lot of comments from a lot of people that says the exact opposite. A lot of them are like, oh man, we about to get Darren Waller 2.0 now. Oh man, he about to put in work with the Steelers. Oh man, now he going to a team that can actually develop him. Oh man, we, he, we about to really see Miles Boykin now. So it's like a complete flip-flop. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, but let me tell you why. Um, this is a really, really good move for Miles Boykin. It's a really good situation uh, for Miles Boykin. There's a couple reasons. Um, now, Mitch Trubisky, that is reason number one. Uh, not that it's completely over all the other reasons, but that's number one as in first, not the best. But anyway, Mitch Trubisky is reason number one. While I feel like him being with Pittsburgh is a good situation for Miles Boykin. Mitch Trubisky just got to Pittsburgh. They just signed him this offseason uh, about a month ago. Signed him to a two-year deal. He's obviously going to be their starter. That is their guy. Now, he is a bridge quarterback, so we know he's not going to be their long-term answer at quarterback. He's not going to be their franchise quarterback. He's sort of the band-aid right now, but he's going to be their starter. So with that, Mitch Trubisky is brand new to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brand new. Miles Boykin now is also brand new to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brand new. So that means that Miles Boykin, he has an opportunity here. Because Mitch Trubisky, with him being brand new to the team, brand new to the organization, brand new to the offense, brand new to the wide receivers, he doesn't have any favorites yet. Doesn't have any favorites yet. So it's not like, going to be like, oh man, Mitch Trubisky, every time this happens and he throws to this receiver. No. Every time in this formation he goes to this receiver. No. He doesn't have any tendencies because he's brand new. So with Mitch Trubisky being on a clean slate, Miles Boykin being on a clean slate, he has an opportunity to get involved early. Now, another reason why this is such a good situation for Miles Boykin is because he has somebody who is a familiar face to him. Somebody that he put in a lot of work with before when he was a little bit younger. Somebody that used to play opposite the field with him uh, in college. That would be Chase Claypool. Those two were the number one and number two receivers. So <laughs> when you got chemistry with somebody and you vibe with somebody, it, it can help everything on the field. It can, it can help things translate that much more. And if they end up having that clo a close relationship too, that even goes off the field, oof, that can help out so much. Because while they're getting coached by their coaches, they can help coach each other. They, oh, no, you should have done this. Oh, no, no. This works when you do this. Oh, no, no, no. It would be better if you did it this way. Oh, no, no. This is the route you take when the cornerback does. It can be a beautiful thing. Now, something else. We know the Steelers now, again, they don't have Ben Roethlisberger, so we'll see if that's subject to change. But we know with Steelers offense, they have a lot of volume. They do a lot of the short passes. Um, they throw in the deep passes here and there, too, but it's based off of a lot of volume. And again, without Ben Roethlisberger, that could be subject to change. We'll see. But the, 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 the wide receivers, they get a lot of passes thrown their way. Everybody does. They have a lot of those passes at the line of scrimmage. They have a lot of those screen plays, the short passes, the dump offs. Everybody. Najee, he'll get his. Uh, Freiburg, he'll get his. Uh, Chase Claypool, get Deontay Johnson, he'll get his, but now you throwing Miles Boykin too. He can get his. This is an opportunity for him to for him to really get uh, his volume up. Because we know at Ravens, they're not a big volume passing game like that. 
Uh, they don't do a lot of the short stuff. Um, Ravens passing game, a lot of times it can be a lot of all or nothing. Um, so it, but with the Steelers, it's a lot of dinking and dunking. Like it was a whole lot of it. And like I said again, we'll see if that changes with one Mitch Trubisky. But this could be a good thing for Miles Boykin because it'll allow him to get into the flow of the game a lot easier. It'll allow him to get a chemistry with Mitch Trubisky a lot easier. It'll allow him to get more comfortable during the game a lot easier. You know, um, like when you're playing football, and because I, I remember this a lot of times from playing street football, where you'll be playing, and say, for instance, you ain't have a pass come your way yet, and you've seen all these other people getting tackled and stuff, you're like, ah. I don't know if I'm ready to get hit yet. And then you finally catch the pass. And it's like, okay, and you finally take that first tackle. And once you take that, catch that first pass and take, take that first tackle, it's like, ah, all right, there we go. All right, I needed that. All right, I'm good now. I'm, I'm ready. That, it, it helps you get into the flow of the game uh, that much better. And, and, it, and it helps ease everything. It helps calm your nerves. Because if you're going through the game, if you're going through the game and nobody's throwing the ball your way, you're not engaging in any physical contact whatsoever, then you could feel like, oh, man, I'm, I'm getting cold, man. I'm getting cold. Not, like, literally cold, but figuratively. Like, cold, my, my hands ain't hot. You know what I mean. Um, so, Miles Boyd, the, the, the offense that he'll be in, it'll be good uh, to keep him active. Uh, another thing, we know Steelers. They love to run that football. And with Steelers wide receivers, they are very physical. Um, and with that being said, Miles Boykin, he was known for his run blocking with the Baltimore Ravens. And now, you know, like Steelers run the ball, but Ravens like run, 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 run the ball. Uh, so Miles Boykin will be <laughs> more than welcomed uh, by Pittsburgh uh, as far as his run blocking. That'll be a great thing for him. Um, now, something else, a couple of other things. Um, shout out to my guy Skeptical Because he mentioned this um, As far as uh, He talked about how Mike Tomlin He, he loves mature players um, So Miles Boykin You know like You never hear a peep out of him You never hear uh, Any disrespect to anybody He doesn't seem like He's outspoken at all uh, We just don't hear much From Miles Boykin at all But You don't ever hear any Like bad stories Oh he was mouthing off At the coach Oh he was yelling at the coach he's, No you never hear any, Anything like that so Mike Tomlin will appreciate that. And now from me, Skep didn't say this, but shout out to him. But I'm sure uh, Miles Boykin, he, he ain't going to have to put in any crazy requests uh, for the Steelers to play music at practice. I mean, I'm sure he'll be fine with silence, whatever. But anyway, um, another thing, too, uh, with um, Chase Claypool and Miles Boykin. Oh, man, That's, this can be a beautiful thing. This can really be a beautiful thing uh, for both of them um, because Mike Tomlin, he he going to try to get it out of him, man. He going to try to get it out of him. Um, he is really going to try to maximize Miles Boykin's potential. Um, but something else that my guy Skeptical said, and this, this was really my favorite point that he made. Um, he talked about how, and, and you know, everybody, a lot of people say, oh, Miles Boykin, he's 6'5", but he don't play like it. Miles Boykin, he's 6'5", but he plays soft. Miles Boykin, he don't jump for the ball. He don't go get it. He, all this and all that. But the point that my guy Skip made was that the Ravens, as much as people will say, oh, he didn't play like a big receiver, my guy Skip talked about how the Ravens, they didn't even use him like a big receiver. And that's something that, I mean, we've talked about it before on here. Like, like there were no, like, fade fade routes and nothing like that no jump balls that were thrown his way and all that but it was really like nothing nothing and then the point that he made too is that he said the Ravens brought in Dez Bryant they brought in Dez Bryant and we know what Dez Bryant is about we know Dez Bryant and caught so many jump balls from Tony Romo and some from Dak Prescott over his time caught his little back shoulder throws and all that but more so the jump balls but the Ravens didn't use Dez Bryant. They didn't use a big receiver as a big receiver with Dez Bryant. And they certainly didn't do it with Miles Boykin either. They didn't. 
So am I saying that everything is on the Ravens? No, definitely not. It's Miles Boykin responsibility too. But they certainly uh, played their part. Now, when you look at history, you look at the history between the Ravens and the Steelers at wide receiver. Oh, Steelers, they, they bring them in. They bring them in, they, whether they draft them, they, they sign, whatever. They know how to get the most out of their wide receivers. It happens all the time, man. All the time. That is another reason why I feel like this is such a great opportunity for one Miles Boykin. Now, with the Ravens, we also know their history. They are great at developing a lot of things, more so on defense, but, of course, cornerbacks, uh, defensive linemen, uh, defensive ends. Linebacker could be up and down a bit. Um, obviously, you got your Ray Lewis. Is he, <laughs> you know, you got your C.J. Mosley. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, Patrick Queen has been a bit of a struggle uh, with him. Um, I remember Arthur... Arthur, what was it, Arthur Smith? Was name Arthur Smith? I think he went to Florida. No, not Arthur Smith. I feel like that's, that wasn't his name. Anyway, uh, he was a second-round pick out of, yeah, I, I forgot what his name was. But anyway, um, Ravens, they, they can develop a lot of defensive guys. They're pretty good. They're usually developing offensive linemen, uh, running backs, um, tight ends. That, that's been their thing, too, for the most part. Uh, but a wide receiver. A wide receiver has been really rough. Uh, for the Ravens throughout the history. And like we always say, no team is going to be able to develop every single position wonderfully. It, it's just not going to happen. It's impossible unless, let me see. Yeah, it's just not going to happen like that. Um, you're, you're always going to have a struggle somewhere, somewhere. For some teams, it's a little harder to find it than others, but you're going to have a struggle somewhere. But... The fact that Miles Boykin was drafted by the Ravens and, well, I mean, you know the story. Um, it, it was a tough situation walking in. It's very tough in walking in. Um, but I just hope for his sake that this is, this is, his, this is opportunity. And he's going to have to make the most out of this opportunity. Nothing is going to be given to him. It's not going to be handed to him. They're not going to be like, all right, Miles Boykin, you're the chosen one. No. He's going to have to show them like, hey, I can, I can play. I can play. I can do this. Um, so, and, and another thing, too, something that I was thinking about with Mitch Trubisky, um, he knows, like, we know and he knows that he is not Steelers' long-term answer at quarterback, especially if the Steelers decide to draft a quarterback early in this draft. Um, but he knows that he's not their long-term answer. So... When you know something like that, if you know you're not, the, especially if they end up drafting somebody, but if you know you're not the guy, you know you're just a temporary player, a lot of times you may play a little bit looser. You may play a little bit more free. You may take more risk, more chances, and just be like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, because and, and, it's like, like, I know we've all been, well, not all of us, but I've certainly been here before, and I know a lot of y'all have too, where... You um, I, I've been to where I knew either I was going to be getting fired or I was going to be quitting uh, a job. And when I knew that, it's like, OK, like, <laughs> all right, it is what it is. I don't really care about nothing that's going on no more. Whatever happens, happens. I will be more loose. With whatever it is that I was doing at the time on the job, I'd be like, whatever, okay. But that's because I knew I wasn't going to be there forever. I wasn't going to even be there much longer. So I was like, okay, have, I will have some more fun with it and whatnot. And Mr. Trubisky, it could be the same thing for him. He knows he's not going to be there forever. He knows the job is not going to be his forever. Not saying that he shouldn't and he won't try to make the most of it. But he'd be a little bit more loose. So that can go into Miles Boykin's favor with opportunities and chances and jump balls and deep passes and all that stuff. So, but yeah, I, I hope it does work out for him, for sure. Um, glad to see a, 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 a new, like, like I said, fresh opportunity. And he has the opportunity to also go against his former team not once, but at least twice a year. And I remember the last person that that happened to, 
um, of significance. And that was our guy, Brashaw Perryman. Team, keep it clean. We out.